Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on the complications of gastrectomy. Gastrectomy is a surgical procedure that involves the removal of all or part of the stomach. There are three main types of gastrectomy. Total gastrectomy. In this procedure, the entire stomach is removed. This is often done in cases of stomach cancer or other severe conditions that affect the entire stomach. Partial gastrectomy. Only a portion of the stomach is removed in this type of surgery. The extent of removal depends on the location and extent of the disease. And sleeve gastrectomy. While not primarily done for medical conditions, sleeve gastrectomy is a type of weight loss surgery where a significant portion of the stomach is removed to reduce its size. This helps in limiting the amount of food a person can eat, leading to weight loss. The complications of gastrectomy can be divided into early and late. Early complications include hemorrhage. Reactionary bleeding within first 24 hours may require reoperation. Or secondary bleeding, due to intra-abdominal infection following an astomotic leak or pancreatic fistula. Possible pseudoaneurysm formation such as splenic artery pseudoaneurysm will need radiological intervention. Another early complication is an astomotic leak, post-op day 5-7. Tachycardia is an early sign, mostly occur at esophagojejunostomy. Early leak present as septic episode or contaminated drain discharge. Delayed leak can be treated conservatively if patient not septic. Duodenal stump leak or blowout, due to progressive afferent limb dilation from kink or volvulus. And pancreatic fistula can occur even without pancreatic resection. Whereas for late complications, early satiety. Gastroesophageal reflux leading to esophagitis, which is common for proximal gastrectomy. Dumping syndromes. When SIGSTED scoring system score more than 7 is suggestive of dumping syndrome. Early dumping syndrome occurs within 30 minutes. This is due to rapid filling of the proximal small intestine with hypertonic food, resulting in fluid being drawn into the gut by osmosis. This reduces blood volume, causing hypotension, tachycardia, palpitation and dizziness. This can be treated by eating small frequent meals with low carbohydrates and high protein or fat. Late dumping syndrome occurs within 2 to 3 hours. Rapid inflow of carbohydrates into jejunum induce hyperinsulinemia followed by hypoglycemia. Treat by decreasing carbohydrate load in main meals and take small amounts of carbohydrate between main meals. Other late complications are nutritional deficiency. Where we need to supplement with B12 injections, vitamin D and iron. Fat malabsorption leads to decrease in absorption of fat-soluble vitamins, and decreased calcium absorption after gastrectomy. All postmenopausal women and all patient more than 70 years should be replaced with oral calcium and vitamin D iron deficiency. B12 binds to intrinsic factor and gets absorbed in the ileum. Loss of intrinsic factor during gastrectomy causes B12 deficiency. Treat with IM vitamin B12. Iron absorption in duodenum and upper jejunum. Decreased acid production leads to decreased conversion of iron by gastric acid. Malabsorption due to reduced gastric acid and bypassed duodenum. Treat with oral iron supplement. Loop syndromes. Occurs in Billroth II reconstruction. Mechanical obstruction of the afferent jejunal loop due to kinking, anastomotic narrowing, or adhesions, causes postprandial epigastric pain with nausea, nonbilious vomiting. Can be complicated by duodenal stump blowout in the early postoperative period and postoperative obstructive jaundice, ascending cholangitis, and pancreatitis due to transmission of high pressures back to the biliopancreatic ductal system. This can be decreased by doing RU-NY surgery. Other late complications are retained antrum syndrome, intestinal hurry, bile reflux gastritis, and recurrence of gastric cancer. That's all for this video. Thank you.